define citizenship based on race or ethnicity. Being American or British is not about belonging to a certain group. It's about believing in a certain set of ideals, the rights of individuals, the rule of law. That is why we hold incredible diversity within our borders. That's why there are people around the world right now who believe that if they come to America, if they come to New York, if they come to London, if they work hard, they can pledge allegiance to our flag and call themselves Americans. If they come to England, they can make a new life for themselves and can sing God Save the Queen just like any other citizen. Yes, our diversity can lead to tension. And throughout our history, there have been heated debates about immigration and assimilation in both of our countries. But even as these debates can be difficult, we fundamentally recognize that our patchwork heritage is an enormous strength. That in a world which will only grow smaller and more interconnected, the example of our two nations says it is possible for people to be united by their ideas instead of divided by their differences. That it's possible for hearts to change and old hatreds to pass. That it's possible for the sons and daughters of former colonies to sit here as members of this great parliament and for the grandson of a Kenyan who served as a cook in the British Army to stand before you as President of the United States. That is what defines us. That is why the young men and women in the streets of Damascus and Cairo still reach for the rights our citizens enjoy, even if they sometimes differ with our policies. As two of the most powerful nations in the history of the world, we must always remember that the true source of our influence hasn't just been the size of our economies or the reach of our militaries or the land that we've claimed. It has been the values that we must never waver in defending around the world. The idea that all beings are endowed by our Creator with certain rights that cannot be denied. That is what forged our bond in the fire of war, a bond made manifest by the friendship between two of our greatest leaders. Churchill and Roosevelt had their differences. They were keen observers of each other's blind spots and shortcomings, if not always their own. And they were hard-headed about their ability to remake the world. But what joined the fates of these two men at that particular moment in history was not simply a shared interest in victory on the battlefield. It was a shared belief in the ultimate triumph of human freedom and human dignity, a conviction that we have a say in how this story ends. This conviction lives on in their people today. The challenges we face are great. The work before us is hard. But we have come through a difficult decade, and whenever the tests and trials ahead may seem too big or too many, let us turn to their example and the words that Churchill spoke on the day that Europe was freed. In the long years to come, not only will the people of this island, but the world, wherever the bird of freedom chirps in the human heart, look back to what we've done, and they will say, do not despair, do not yield, march straight forward with courage and purpose, with humility and with hope, with 
faith in the promise of tomorrow, let us march straight forward together, enduring allies in the cause of a world that is more peaceful, more prosperous, and more just. Thank you very much.